When I was in high school, I played ice hockey. I played it for a semester and I was in a team. And I had a few games every single week. And one day, one of my teammates tapped my shoulder and told me to be myself. And I didn't know what that means. At the time, I was not really good at speaking English. So later on, I looked up dictionary or Google. And I knew that it's a type of idiom and even cliche that many people say, but I still couldn't get it. It's like being myself, like, it sounded so philosophical to me. And it actually took me several years to have an idea of what it means to be myself. So today I want to talk about how to be myself. And I think the challenge is that we have so many layers that we don't belong to, but we've been holding on to for so long that they have became part of our identity. But actually they are fake identity. For those who are people pleasers, who are willing to give up their personal fulfillment for the sake of others' benefits, they would have more layers than others. So I think we just need to peel off what is not us. Basically, we just need to declutter our mental world. Have you ever decluttered your closets? It works, it actually works in a similar ways. First, you take out all your clothes out of your closet and put it in one designated area. And you prepare, let's say, three boxes labeled as keep it, dispose it or donate it, and I don't know. And you go through each and every single clothes, asking yourself, do I look great on it? And if answer is yes, just keep it. If it's no, dispose it. And if you don't know, you're not really sure about it, keep it on the third box and go through the same exact process about a month later. So the process of decluttering your mental world works in a similar way. There is a huge difference though. Our thoughts and beliefs are not tangible. It's not visible as clothes. So we need to write it down to see what it is. And I personally wish there is a technology available that captures our mind and translates it into language so we can keep track of our mental activity more easily. But anyway, let's do manual for now. And you just need to write down all your thoughts, a list of thoughts you dwell on in your daytime or nighttime and start from the idea that takes up your mental attention the most. But here's the key. You need to be, we need to be really honest with our feeling. Because our thoughts are invisible, it gets very easy to tweak it and even deceive ourselves. The next step is to try to feel a thought. To try to feel your emotion about every single thought. Emotion is an important indicator that tells you whether you're aligned with your true self or not. If you feel positive about something, it means that you're on the right track. If you feel negative or resistant or even unclear about something, it's a clear sign that something is off balance and needs your attention. In this case, you need to discern whether it's truly not your preference or you're just reacting out of fear. There are things 
that we want in our life, but we feel resistant to go get it or just act upon it for a variety of reasons like judgment, fear, fear of loss, fear of success even. Our personal happiness is highly subjective to our feeling. How we feel about what we do, who we are and where we are determines the level of fulfillment, the level of happiness. So if we feel negative, we, have, we basically have two options. We either change the outer circumstances or change our perspective, change the way we look at things. It usually takes some level of time and effort to make physical change versus when it comes to our emotion, it can be changed within a second like this. And most of the times, the second way is more powerful and has a long lasting effect. Have a great day wherever you are and enjoy your day on this planet Earth. Because life is not too short to enjoy our everyday life. And look at this beautiful sea.